I said that in the Muslim culture we are not allowed to use idols, so we are only using symbols. And those symbols are coming from three categories. We have calligraphy, it's the Arabic writing, which is mostly Quranic verses or poetry. We have flowers, okay, the floral decoration, and then we have geometry. So calligraphy, flowers, and geometry. Of course, if we would like to talk about calligraphy or flowers, we will spend it there. As long as we don't have enough time, we'll talk about geometry. So if we take any of the geometric forms at random, we'll find that they are made from straight lines, okay? And then angles, okay? Lines and then angles, all of them. One figure that we never see in the Arabic design. We don't see it. What? Circles. Oh. So I think you never think that in this madrasa, in these thousands of designs, we will not find circles. But at the very beginning, when you first see this, it looks to you, it seems it's yeah, a, it circle. Looks like a circle. But no, it's a circle made from combination of geometry. We have letters, round, we have dots. But you never see a circle. Is so that a circle? Yeah, it's which one? Dot. No, these are dots. No, I'm talking about circle. You know, circle okay. is. So why the circle does not exist in Arabic? So the circle is one of the numbers that were actually invented by the Arabs. But of course, when we talk about number one, two, three, why we call them by their name? Why we call number one one? Have you ever thought of that? Why we call number one one? Why we call number two two? What is the, the link between the word two and then the shape two? I don't know. Is it at random names or there is a reason behind these names? Uh, I so, guess there's a reason. Okay, so one. <laughs> it's the number of angles in each. One angle. Can I be here? Can I be here? So I expect the two to have two angles. One, two, three angles. No way. It is. <laughs> One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So this is the how the numbers came from. So the number huh. of fingers. Yes, the Arabs did not have. The, the Arabs did not have zero. Do you know what? Be before I actually, no, nobody had zero. So before the Arabic numbers. So there existed the Roman, Indian, Greek, Latin numbers, but no, 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 not zero. So what's the first Roman number? One. So same thing for the Greek, for the Latin. So nobody had zero, and then it was impossible. Yeah, it was impossible to talk about mathematics at that. So math started with the coming of zero, which was also invented by the Arabs. The person who invented the Arabic numbers was actually trying to find out uh, something that helped math to develop. I mean, if all the numbers are with angles, then what is the figure? Because if he would like to write 20 and then a form of 20 angles, then it would be a very, very big, messy. weird, messy yeah. uh, but figure. But who, like, who cares if the angles are two? Like, the number two means two. It doesn't yeah. have anything to do with angles. Like, if I say, can I have two pieces of cake? No, 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 the representation. Okay. So why did he not make this is, for example, for, for two? Why? Why did you choose this shape, not this shape? 
I'm talking about the representation. The no, 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 no. It has to do only with the choice. So this word, one, it does not. It's not like this. It's not one. Now it's the angle. It's not the lines. It's the number of angles. Did you get it? Yeah. Right now. So the only thing that does not exist with this is the round shape, and then the round shape is not here. So the circle. I'm not talking about zero, but the conception of the circle, the figure, is Indian, not Arabic. So the Arabs imported it or brought it from India and then introduced it within the Arabic numbers. So this shape was introduced, brought from India, but given the name of zero, be given the name of a number that is valueless, and that does not have value at the beginning, and then the value started when we talk about the minus. So this is called in Arabic, what do you call zero in Arabic? Huh? It's called Sifr. That's the name zero in Arabic. So it is the, actually where the English word cipher came from. And then this word moved from Sifr to Sefero. And then to Zefero. Can you see this? Zefero. Zefero. And then they abbreviated into. This is how the word came from Arabic pronunciation, Sifr, to the actually Latin one, Sefero, uh, Sefero, and then to the zero in different languages, in the French, Arabic, or, or, or uh, Spanish, or English. Right, now, the idea is that we all the time talk about the numbers, and then we said that they were invented by the Arabs. Right, so when we talk about algebra, you know it, so we said that it was invented by the Arabs. Algorithms, it was invented by the Arabs. But do we know the person who made it, or just the Arabs? We probably know the person. We just don't know. I just don't know. The, the idea is that when we talk about the Western world, and about like the Greek or the Latin, and then we know many names. Like the person who discovered gravity is called what? The gravity? Isaac Newton. So all the world, and then including Arab, so you know that the gravity is related to Newton, right? So when we talk about electricity, then we talk about Thomas Edison, or the, some people say Tesla. When we talk about like uh, the theory of uh, let's say of Pythagoras or, or, uh, or Euclides or these so many people they are known. Huh? So but when we said that the Arabs are pioneers in math, in astronomy, in this and that, but they never teach names of the Arabs when they teach the subject. And that would be, put a big question mark about what was the reason behind not mentioning the Arab scholar's name. Right. The person who invented algebra and algorithm is actually this. Ben al right? So the word algebra comes from his name. The second word is algorithm, which is al. So al khawarizmi, that's the English word algorithm. In Arabic, we call it al khawarizmiyat, and that comes from his name. So you're from New York. What do we call you? You're New York? Yorkers? Right. In English you call New Yorker, but in Arabic we add I and then and, and, and say New Yorki. Or Bostoni. Or Fasi. Marakshi. So we put I at the end to form the belonging. So Al is the article. So like when you say the New Yorker or the Bostonian. So the Al Khawarizmi is someone from this country. And then this country is actually Uzbekistan. So algorithm is the old name, or rather, yes, algorithm is the old name of the new country called Uzbekistan. And then if you happen to go to Uzbekistan, then the, the city Tashkent, there is the statue of Ben al Jabbar, Khawarizmi. Do you know where the statue of Maimonides is in Europe? Yes, there is a big statue of Maimonides in, in the city where he was born, Cordoba. Oh, wow. so there is a big statue of Maimonides in Cordoba, and then the text was he was originally. So the statue of the father of mathematics is in Tashkent. Right now. So, 9 plus 7 is 16, 12, uh, yeah, 11, 
Huh? 15. Right. All the languages, originally Greek, Latin, Roman, whatever, they are written from the left to the right. Okay? What about the languages written right to left? Right to left. Yeah. And Hebrew and Arabic. Right? So in Hebrew, do you speak Hebrew? Right. What, can you read this number? Huh? What do you mean? In Hebrew? In Hebrew. What? You mean in Hebrew? No. No. So we'll be still from right to left. Right. You know, I can't tell you. Huh? It would be 615. Well, it is 1000 now. Even if you write Hebrew from right to left, but when you read numbers, you read it left. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay. The only language in the world where you use numbers from right to left, as the way you write them is Arabic. So this is 1516. In all languages, in Arabic, it is 10,500 and 1,000. So right to left. And then this is how the West, the West or the world used to read it. When this time, outside, this is outside, the time when outside. the numbers. Basically, outside because the 999 is the year yes, when the numbers the left yes. or they were introduced to Europe by who? By this person, Sylvester. Come on. <laughs> Do you know who is this person? Sylvester yeah. the second is or the first French. Oh. Okay. The Catholic Pope, Sylvester II of the year 1000, studied in Fez not before being Pope of Avignon. So the Pope Avignon was mathematician here in Fez before being Pope. And then he studied math right to left, reading and writing. When he went back home to Europe, he started to teach people right to left math, reading and writing. And then for so many years, the Europeans used to read numbers right to left, like the Arabs, but they changed it to make it like compatible with the language. But some of them, or oh, rather some Europeans did not choose to change it. Do you know who is in Europe reading numbers right to left? Do you speak uh, German? This is 75 in English, 75 in Spanish, but in German it is 25 and 17, which is the same Arabic way. So in Germany, Netherlands, part of Switzerland, many sections of India, they still read the numbers as they got them from the so it's still 75 here, it's Yeah, yeah, but because five units and then seven tens. So instead of 75, we say five and 70, not five and seven. Now here we can say seven and five, right? But you can say five and seven, five and 70, right? That's how we call it. So uh, in English, do you read numbers right to left? Huh? No, not a single one. You will be surprised to know that this is red, right, to left. It's not 10 and 9. Do you speak French? No. So in French it is 19. In Spanish it is 10 y 9. 10 y 9, but in English it is 9, 10. And that's the end of our... Okay, and then this is, this is for you to keep. Okay, wow. nice.